It's Tozer. <laughs> ah, and it's sunny out. And it's nice. It's not as hot as yesterday, but... <laughs> Uh, just barely gracing 89 to 90 degrees on the porch. That's warm. In Tozer, I'm always blessed because in being that recent times, he saw what was coming. He addressed many issues that we all face and God seems to have inspired him in such a way that not only did he call himself a prophet, but people respected him as one. A possibility to mean right and still go wrong. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. 1 Peter 2.19 there are areas in our Christian lives where in our effort to be right, we may go wrong. So wrong as to lead to spiritual deformity. To be specific, let me name a few. When in our determination to be bold, we become brazen. Courage and meekness are compatible qualities. Both were found in perfect proportion in Christ, even in conflict with his enemies. When in our desire to be frank, we become rude. Candor without rudeness was always found in the man, Christ Jesus. The Christian who boasts that he calls a spade a spade is likely to end by calling everything a spade. When in our efforts to be watchful, we become suspicious. Because there are many adversaries, the temptation is to see enemies where none exist, or to develop a spirit of hostility to everyone who disagrees with us. When we seek to be serious and become sober, somber, Gloominess is a defect of character and should never be equated with godliness. Joy is a great therapeutic for the mind. When we mean to be conscientious and become overscrupulous, if the devil cannot succeed in destroying the conscience, he will settle for making it sick. I know Christians who live in a state of constant distress, fearing that they may displease God. They believe this self-torture to be proof of godliness. But how wrong, how wrong they are. In these latter days, you know, because Jesus is coming, by the way, and if you don't know it, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. It seems to be so obvious, but, you know, maybe you don't know. Maybe you see things differently, <laughs> and maybe God might want you to see things differently. I don't know, but for those of us who have studied Scripture, and we know eschatology. I mean, it's not like it's a forbidden science or anything. I mean, it's real easy to read the Scriptures and see that since Israel became a nation that my friend is the beginning point of the latter days the end of the world the time when God himself said that hey this is you know the time spans are coming you can tell by this one thing when Israel comes back into the land you know and they did and no one expected it <laughs> and they did and so we do know that we're in the latter days, but in these last days, as we look around and we see things fitting as God said they would, not because people are predestined to or something, but because God already knew that they would choose that path, we do see, as Tozer says, kind of a choice every day for us to choose which way we will go. Will it affect us to be knowing that false doctrine would come in and false doctrines and teachers and false prophets and false everything you know I mean nowadays you know if you even look at the body you know how many times do people get plastic surgery to have false appearances <laughs> you can go there wherever you want to with that one and the bottom line is that does that make you smile or does it make you bitter does it make you look at everyone suspiciously or does it look at, make you recognize just simply that there's a balance there, that things are going to happen, but you can still be whom God made you to be? Because Jesus lived in a time where everyone wanted him to declare himself king, cast out the Romans, and, you know, let's get on with having the Jew 
the children of Israel as the dominant nation because they have God with them. And Jesus didn't pay any attention to it. As a matter of fact, he said his kingdom was not of this world. He had something far greater. And not only did he say that to his disciples and to those people that wanted to manipulate him in a political maneuver and also those who wanted to manipulate him in a religious fervor, but also he said it to Satan himself who came to him and said, I could give you all the kingdoms of this world. And Jesus said, no, no. Because the reality is, is that this world is not our home. And we don't have to fear for false teachers or false doctrines and run around and look for, you know, and try to find every single little knit and cranny that might, you know, trip someone up and think that we're doing God a favor by our intellect. I don't think so. I think when we focus in on who Jesus is and who we are with Jesus, that we can be drawing men to God and not to ourselves by simply sharing who he is, what he's done, how he is, where he's going, what he said. Most of the time when I share things about what Jesus said, people reject it. They don't like it. You know, like, judge not. No, you, you have to judge. No, you don't. <laughs> you can ask God, because guess what? Here's a real personal relationship. It's, it sounds really, you know, like, I don't know what you want to call it. Maybe it sounds handicapped. Maybe it sounds disabled. But let's get real for a minute. If I sit down and I'm trying to discern things, and then I use this quote-unquote new idea of that, I can judge because after all, you know, I have to be able to tell the difference between, you know, night and day and day and night and dark and evil and good and right and all the other things we see in our sight because I know that I am right. No. Why? Because here's the difference and here's your key for why you do not judge. You can ask God, is Jesus real to you? Is God real to you? Is he a living God? If he's not, then yes, you have to judge then yes, you have to use your own mindset. Yes, you have to think for yourself, be yourself, do yourself, play the religious game of judgment and judging. But, but, if Jesus is real, <laughs> if the Son of God is the Son of God and the Son of Man, if we can trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not into our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledge him, and he directs our path, then we can ask God to judge for us. Do you notice the difference? Do you notice the complete turning it over to someone else to make a judgment call? Do you recognize that every day of your life is supposed to be turning it back to God? If you look in heaven, you'll see the same thing. The four and twenty elders, what did they do with their crowns? Did they wear them? Or did they throw them down and cast them at the feet of he who deserves all our glory? They cast them down. So anything that you think you've got, anything that you think you are, anything that you pretend or contend that you are the one in charge, turn it over. Like this old song used to sing from the Imperials, I think. Turn it over to the Father, turn it over to the Son, turn it over to the Spirit who makes us all in one. But... You turn it over, you turn it back to God, and God will speak to you and share with you and show you what to do. Don't judge. And so, Tozer's right. There's always two ways to go with it. You know, you can kind of like, you know, get a little carried away in one way, but if it's leading you astray from God and being dependent upon Him and seeking Him and developing with Him that knowledge of Him, daily and walking with him in a knowledge that he's inside you and all about you and that you can be in constant conscious contact with him then guess what maybe you should go that direction seems like that's what jesus did <laughs> and i keep saying look it's not that hard to hear his voice it's not that hard to walk with him jesus said it's pretty easy but you gotta want to and maybe that's the key Maybe that's what you need to ask yourself today. Do you want to? What do you want God to be? That answer will determine who your God is.